boom, boom, sh shake the room, boom, boom. Shake the room, literally shake the room. Here we go. Testing, testing, one, two, three, how we all doing? Uh huh, yeah, 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 I hope we're all doing well. I hope we're all doing well. Right, let me just tweet out that I'm live. And one second. Let me just yeah, get that saved. There we go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, where do I get my link from? Always, always a bit of a noob when it comes to this. Always bloody forget. Hang on. Hang on, guys. We're told ah! There's an advert there. Ah! Alright. There we go. Let me just tweet it out. Uh, currently live streaming on my YouTube channel. Reacting to the new episode titles as they are revealed, as well as the new trailer when it drops later. Boom. Link to the stream. I don't know why I'm just reading it out of my head, but it's cool. Alright, Doctor Who. Um, and send. there we go. Boom, boom. Happy Easter, Trek Matt. Lovely to have you here. I hope you're doing really well. Okay, right. Right, first thing is, let's have a look at all these bloody titles. Because there's, there's, there's quite a few to get through already. Hello, Cameron. What is everyone thinking about the t titles? Uh, well, we've got a few already. Um, let me go through them. Let me find them, let me find them. Um, okay, so... Organization here, peoples. Ha, 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 ha. Right, right. Okay, let's just switch over. Okay, so the first one we've got is Space Babies, written by Russell T. Davis and directed by Julie Ann Robinson. Very interesting. Uh, and then we've got uh, The Devil's Chord, uh, again, written by Russell T. Davis and directed by Ben Chessel. Very interesting stuff here. And then Boom, which is the one I'm... Well, I, I don't know, to be fair, episode 2 really excites me because I'm interested in the character that Jinx Monsoon's going to be playing. Um, I think that's going to be a very interesting character. The Music Maker, I believe, is the title. Uh, and then next up... Oh, well, yeah, this is written by... Uh, yeah, so next up we've got Boom, written by Stephen Moffat. The first non-written episode by a showrunner that we've had in a long time, but it's written by a former showrunner, which I find is hilarious. Uh, yeah, so it's written by Stephen Moffat, directed by Julianne Robinson, which is really cool. Uh, and then over here we've got 73 Yards, again, written by Russell T. Davis, uh, but directed by Dylan Holmes Williams. Uh, so 73 Yards, it looks like it's a pub and it's snowing. Hmm, interesting. But let's see what you're all saying in the comments. Let me just switch over. Over, over, over. Do, do, do. Hello, Evil of the Daleks. Yes, that would be a cool um, one. Happy Easter, just finished watching season one of Torchwood and was thinking what if Mrs. Flood is a character similar to what Billis Manga, who the Time Lords knew as the Regulator. Now that would be very interesting. I would certainly be up for um, you know a character as uh, mysterious as what uh, Billis was. I, f I feel like that would be a very interesting casting. Uh, apparently episode four, 73 yards, Russell has claimed to be some of his best work. Yes, I have seen that. Apparently it's very emotive. It's very... Um, yeah it's, yeah, it's meant to be a bit a bit emotional, uh, apparently. And apparently Shooty gives off, like, a really powerful performance in that episode. So, I mean, that's an episode to keep an eye on as well, because I really like that with uh, any Doctor, where they get the first emo emotional-driven performance, which I think, yeah, is going to be really cool. Um, you know, that, that, that that's something that I really like uh, about any new um, Doctor coming into the role. 
because you, you know you, you always get hyped to see what is going to be one of their defining moments and hopefully episode four we might be looking back in time and be like okay wow shooty really did put in his a game there which um you know would have been cool to see Re you know um but yeah i'm, I'm really hyped for that but uh yeah out, out of the four that have been revealed so far which one are you excited for the most because yeah we've got space babies the devil's called boom and then we've got uh 73 yards which does seem like um yeah like the the graphic looked a bit like a pub which uh, did get me very intrigued by that. Uh, hello, Thomas Haynes. Uh, I am doing good, mate. I hope, hope you're doing well. And happy Easter to you. Uh, being a bit of a quiet one today. Um, but yeah, we are vibing. Also as well, everyone. Uh, just whilst I'm here. And obviously not doing a cheeky uh, promo. But I am doing a Race for Life um, in June. So uh, for cancer research, I'm doing a uh, like a sponsored run. Uh, it's five k run, which I'm not even sure how long that is from Tom here. But um, yeah, I'm I'm going to be doing that. There's a link to the fundraiser below if you want to donate. Uh, I'll I'll probably go through it a little bit more um, you know, late later in the stream maybe. But uh, yeah, it, it, it would mean the world to me if you could uh, you know pop over and you know even the uh, little bit of a, you know, a donation, or even sharing it to family and friends would mean the world to me, because it is uh, something that I hold close to my heart, and it's the first time I've ever gone and um, done something like this, so, yeah, it, it would mean the world to me if we could do something, like raising money for an important cause. Okay, yeah, Tom, no worries. Uh, Man City are playing, oh, I uh, really hope they do well. Really hope they do well, mate. I'm, I'm guessing that's who you, who you support anyway. Um, I, I am excited for this new series of Doctor Who. Yes, I am now. I'm starting to feel, feel the hype, which, um, you know, is uh, something that I did struggle to get into. Uh, I can't lie. Um, but now I'm here. I'm excited to see the trailer. Oh, yes, I'm really excited to see the trailer as well. The trailer's going to be amazing. Yeah, like, uh, like the new trailer, I'm going to do like a breakdown here, and then I might upload a clip of it separately, uh, alongside my reaction, obviously, um, to uh, the YouTube channel. So, yeah, it's going to be a busy evening for Nerd Den. You know, I've, I've gone from not uploading as much to uploading like three times in one day. But here we are, just having fun, you know, uh, you know, get, getting into things, getting hyped about Doc 2 again. So, uh, also, there is something I want to point out about Episode 4. Well, someone else has already pointed out, but I want to point out to you guys. So, here we go. Switch Rooney. Alright, so, Doctor Who filming locations on Twitter said the relevance of the sign. Filming occurred for this episode at the White Cross Inn in Grosvenor, uh, which was addressed as Y Premoir. I, I mean, I'm so sorry, I've definitely uh, mispronounced that there. Uh, which translates to uh, the Deadwood in Welsh. So, interesting, the Deadwood. It's a bit of a mysterious name. I mean, there's loads of pubs, uh, especially in the UK, obviously, that um, have uh, interesting names, very interesting names. But, yeah, shout, shout out to uh, Doctor Who filming locations. I mean, Nick is always on the ball when it obviously comes to filming stuff. Um, and, you know, when it comes to trailers and stuff, he always knows like the context behind certain things and... Yeah, absolutely fantastic person. So if you are on Twitter or X, go and check out his page because he's always on the ball. Um, yeah, this this is incredible here. The relevance of the sign. Wow. Yeah. Ah, it's incredible. Can't I can't blow you away. But we've got about ten, no, nine minutes now till the next one drops. So uh, let me hear what you're all saying. Do -do -do. Oh, yeah, the playing is awesome. Cool, cool. I'm liking the way they're releasing the titles with little clips. Gives you a little feel for each episode. Yes, it is very atmospheric. I do really like that. Uh, when is the trailer out? So the trailer is going to be... Uh, yeah, it's 6pm, as Tom said. Uh, yeah, it's uh, going to be a very exciting one. Uh, duh, duh, duh. I didn't expect Stephen Moffat. Yeah, well... I mean, he's meant to be writing more than just one episode. Because uh, essentially, Stephen Moffat is 
well, the original leak was that Moffat is meant to be writing this year's Christmas special as well, or at the very least co-writing it, and then he's meant to be writing another episode for um, season two, or series 15, whatever you want to call it. Um, so yeah, next year's season of Doctor Who, he will have an episode as well, which I think, I don't know, it's going back to the old ways of like, um, you know, we've got Russell T. Davies, we've got uh, Phil Collinson, Jane Tranter, Julie Gardner, we're getting all the old people back, I say old people, like they're old, no, like all, all, all the old crew back, and then you got Stephen Moffat as well. I just hope we get new talent because so far it's just Russell T. Davis writing everything. Uh, and then you've got Stephen Moffat. It's just, oh, yeah, it, it's uh, it, it's an interesting look. It's an interesting look. So excited for the trailer for the episodes on May 11th. Yes, it is going to be really exciting. Obviously, a new trailer means new footage and stuff, which uh, is going to be exciting. Um, and yeah, the new episodes as well. I mean, we get two episodes in one day, so we're getting Space Babies and The Devil's Chord, uh, which is going to be very interesting. Uh, is it the same as Boomtown in Series 1? No, no, no. It's, it's a completely different one. I think it's it's a very interesting title, though. But I think it's to do with uh, the Doctor and that landmine, so... Yeah. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting episode. Very interesting concept as well. Uh, if that ends up being the case. But I imagine we're going to get some uh, footage as well. Uh, some new footage in this trailer. But um, it it does seem as well. And uh, Hold on. There is something else here that Doctor Who Film Locations on Twitter has pointed out. So let me just transfer over again to uh, Twitter. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the page I was pointing out from an interview extract that uh, <laughs> Stephen Moffat has said, and he says that the truth is, if I say anything negative about Doctor Who, it goes everywhere, like boom, everywhere, right? It doesn't exactly bring joy to the world that I just say something negative about Doctor Who. So uh, obviously, yeah, there is that rumour that he is writing, um, or at least co-writing the Christmas special for this year, and uh, that is joy to the, joy to the world. Which obviously, yeah, that is, you know, very Christmassy and, ah, it's just the fact that <laughs> Boom has been confirmed as a title now. So maybe that interview extract was like his way of saying, yeah, uh, here's the episode title drops. Wow. Blimey. Um, interesting, to say the least. Blimey. Blimey. Okay, we've got some new stuff in the chat. Do -do 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 -do. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, Dra the trailer's dropping at 6. Uh, they're dropping episode titles every half an hour, so we've had episodes 1 to 4 already. So Space Babies, Devil's Chord, uh, Boom, and 73 Yards. And then we're going to get one in 5 minutes. Um, yeah, Space Babies being a creepy alien style um, episode would be really cool. That will be really cool. And yes, I, uh, Tom, I have seen that photo with um, Russell... T. Davis, Mark Gatiss, and uh, Jody, Really cool. Um, and yeah, now nah, it is nice to see uh, Jody out and about as well. Hi, I can't wait for the new season of Doctor Who. Yes, I really can't wait either. It's going to be exciting. Uh, the titles are on, as Tom said, yes, they are on Twitter or any of the other Doctor Who social media pages. And they're on there with some pretty cool graphics as well. Uh, what about the Beatles episodes? I think they've already revealed who are playing the main Beatles. Yes, I think they have. I haven't actually looked... Who's playing them though? Um, but I can't wait to see the Beatles episode. Like again, that's one episode I'm anticipating. I am a bit of a Beatles fan, so uh, seeing this being played into a, like a semi-historical episode alongside a very interesting um, villain there, a very interesting villain there um, with uh, Jinx Monsoon's character, which I think is going to be pretty cool. Oh, imagine if they dropped the uh, Christmas special uh, episode today. Because uh, Joy to the World um, is practically confirmed now at this point. Uh, da -da -da. Do you think there's a sign of Mark Gatiss returning? Uh, maybe. I mean... Everyone else from RTD1 has returned now, so if he's not writing an episode, he might be starring in one at this point, so that's uh, kind of the thing now. 
But I, w I wouldn't be against it, to be honest. But I just want to see some new writers as well. I want to see some new writers. 100%. Okay, my... Okay, I'm getting asked. Who do you think Susan Triad and Mrs. Flood are? So, Susan Triad... Um, I, someone came up with this theory about the TARDIS being a thing. Um, so like maybe like she's something to do with the TARDIS or something like that. Um, because there is that clip in the trailer where the TARDIS is being scanned, so maybe there's something to do with uh, like Triad Industries wanting the TARDIS or something. Maybe she's a Time Lord, like a new Time Lord, a new villainous Time Lord. But, well, no, there's there's a teaser for a, re a reveal. So, to be fair, she could be the Meddling Monk. I'll be completely honest. I would be down for that. I'm, I'm not going to say the Rani, because everyone else says that the Rani is going to come back. Uh, but I think the Meddling Monk would be a very interesting character to have come back. I mean, the Meddling Monk is obviously known for obviously meddling with uh, time and, um, you know, trying to get involved with historical events. So, Imagine if, um, yeah, if we get reintroduced to the meddling monk um, through Susan Triad. I think that would be really cool. Because, yeah, the sun did reveal that there is meant to be a twist with the character um, and she is meant to be villainous, which isn't surprising. But, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see who, who she is. But in terms of Mrs. Flood, that one intrigues me. I hope she is a new character um, and, again, isn't just like another Time Lord. Or something, or like, oh, she's the master, she's the Rani, she's Omega, or something like that. But yeah, okay, the Omega one was a bit of a far fetch, uh, far fetch there. But yeah, I hope Miss uh, Mrs. Flood is just a complete new character. But I absolutely adore Anita Dobson as an actress. So um, I, whatever we get, I'm sure she's gonna knock it out of the park. Uh, Phil Collinson, well, yeah, he's already uh, executive producer on the new series. Um, yeah, so he's already back. I think one of the final two episodes will be called Albion. I think the Albion one is... I think that's the Slug episode, I think. Oh, we've got an episode title drop. We've got an episode title drop. Okay, let's let's reload, reload, reload. Here we go. Here we go. Episode title drop. Are you ready? Because I am. Here we go. Okay, Dot and Bubble. Um, written by Russell T. Davis, directed by Dylan Holmes Williams. Now, it seems to be like a tech... Yeah, like a tech episode. Dot and Bubble. Very interesting episode titles. Dot and Bubble. Hmm. But all these are written by Russell T. Davis. That's um, interesting. Uh, I'm a little bit disappointed by that, though. Like, I, you know, I don't want to sound ungrateful or anything, but... Ah. Uh, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a bit long. You know, it's... I, I, I just wish we had more of um, variety when it comes to writers, because it just seems to be there's just Russell T. Davis all over, all over the gaff. Yeah. Yeah. Dot and Bubble. Yeah, it's a very interesting title. I wonder what it's going to be um, about. It's got me very intrigued. It's got me very intrigued. It's got me feeling very intrigued about it. And yeah, it has a completely different vibe to 73 Yards, which is good. I want to see episodes tackle different genres and stuff and feel different. Um, which I'm sure they will be. Yes, to be fair, I would like to see um, like a Black Mirror-esque Dot 2 episode. I think that would be really cool. I think that would be actually astonishing in a, in a lot of ways. Dot and Bubble, well, that's a very interesting episode. So, oh, someone else has also pointed out on uh, Twitter. So he's 
writing six episodes out of eight, which means that the first 12 episodes of his tenure, he's written 10. He's written 10. So, um, I mean, obviously, that the two episodes for the finale means, um, well, I, I mean, I'm guessing they're going to be written by Russell T. Davis. Oh, wait, no, we, I think we are guaranteed uh, episodes being written by the Loki writers, aren't we? I think. So, we are getting new writers for this season, but I don't think there's going to be many. Like, I think it's just going to be this one episode coming up. Uh, that's written by, I forgot the names. Uh, da, da, da. What else we got? I like new Doctor Actor. Yeah, Shooty Gatwa. I'm really enjoying his ten well ten years so far. I mean, it's very early to say if I you know really like love him and whatnot. But you know what? I am really liking what I'm seeing so far as Shooty, and uh, I love his en energy, charisma as a Doctor, and he's always a joy to watch on screen. Um, and I'm, you know what? I really want to watch the church on Ruby Road after this. I actually might do that. Um, I think that is a vibe. Uh, you've been too harsh of all new Doctor Who. It's just getting a bit not excited to us to see. I oh, know I'm not being harsh, mate. I'm literally just saying how I feel. Like you know, I, it's not about being harsh. I just wish there was more variety with the writers. That's all. But as uh, Trek Matt has uh, rightfully said. Um, you know, it was probably part of the deal of him coming back as Sharona. You know, he probably wanted more writing control, which is fair enough. I just was saying that I wish there was a bit more variety because, you know, it's like when Stephen Moffat used to write under Russell. Um, you know, his episodes were drastically different compared to the rest of the series. So, you know, it's just, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to see the new Moffat, if uh, that makes sense. Yeah, the new Moffat ends up um, springing out and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, I'm still excited for the series. I'm, on. yeah. Oh, hang on a second. Hello, hello. Uh, apparently, there has been all the episode titles have been leaked on Cult Box. There's no way. There's no way. Oh my God. There's no way. There's no way. Uh, let's have a look. Have they? Have they? Hang on. Yeah, exactly. We all have different opinions. I'm trying to have a look at court box. Okay, I actually can't find it. <laughs> Got it. They, they actually might have removed it, to be fair. They might have removed it, which, to be fair, does make sense. It does make sense. Have, have a good life. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. See you later, mate. It could be the first season, more of his season, then he'll step back in the second season. Yeah, to be fair, that is a good uh, point, Trek Matt, yeah. Yeah, that is a good point. That is a good point. Uh, yeah, uh, apparently, yeah, it has leaked, but I'm trying to find it. Because, <laughs> yo, if I could have a look at them early, I'll have a look at them early, but I don't think we can. I think, yeah, I think it has been removed. I think it has been removed. Uh, I'm literally just trying to look now, but I don't think, I don't think we're in luck. I think, unfortunately, we are out of luck. <sighs> da, da, da. I give the Star Beast a 5.4 out of 10. Not amazing. It was alright, my opinion. That's completely fair. 
I, I mean, again, as we were on about opinions earlier, um, you know, I personally enjoyed it. But, you know, that's completely fine. I mean, it obviously wasn't a perfect episode, but, you know, I still enjoyed it. Um, but, yeah, you know, it's it, 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 it's, it's always cool um, hearing what people have to say and stuff about episodes, you know, because I always want to know what people are thinking and stuff. Doctor Who cool box. See if I can find anything. No, they haven't posted. Okay, I, I think it has probably been removed. Which is completely fair. It is completely fair. Have you ever fallen out of that tiny bed? It's not that tiny, to be fair. Um, But I have fallen out of it, yeah. Mainly after, like, a night out or something, I've fallen out of it. Which is, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a bit crazy. Uh, I feel like the way they release titles might become a regular thing. I'm down for that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're getting all of them revealed today for the new season. Uh, and then there's a new trailer as well, which I think is just going to be clip, episode title, clip, and then the next episode title. Just to show, I guess, new clips without revealing too much more uh, of each episode. Uh, it's two seasons released on BBC iPlayer. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's only for the the premiere week where we get in episode one and two, and then after that, it's episodes individually released at midnight. Uh, but they are still on BBC One later that day. So literally, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm a little bit annoyed about that, but still, um, it's still better than having like two. Uh, two, two every day, I guess. Uh, two every week, should I say. <laughs> Have a nice little yawn there. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it is Yeah, two, two episodes on the opening weekend, and then after that, it's one per Saturday. But they are all released at midnight on iPlayer. So as soon as it becomes Saturday, you'll get a new Doctor One iPlayer, which eh, I'll probably stay up and watch it, to be honest. But yeah. Let, let, let me know as well. What do you all think of the new titles? Because honestly, it's, ooh, it's crazy. Oh, good cup of tea, that. Yeah, Space Babies is a very interesting one. Very interesting one. Do you plan on doing live reactions after episodes air now they're doing, dropping at midnight? I mean, I honestly don't know what I'm going to be doing in terms of videos. I might just make them and then schedule them to upload like early afternoon maybe, something like that. But you might get my live reaction straight away after doing the episode. What I normally do is obviously just record a video on my phone just saying like what I thought of the episode. Like, yeah, I thought it was amazing, I thought it was crap or whatever. And then you'll get the breakdowns and stuff in the afternoon. But... Obviously, there's an international audience now, or there should be, so I don't know, really. Um, not really sure how I'm going to do that, but I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. Um, what do you think of Space Babies? Yeah, it's a very interesting title, uh, for sure. So, Stephanie, um, if you head over to the Doctor Who social media pages, they've been dropping uh, episode titles every half an hour. So we've got Space Babies, The Devil's Chord, Boom, 73 yards, and Dot and Bubble. So we've got five out of eight episodes now. And this is leading up until six o'clock where we're getting a brand new trailer. So that's the marketing for today, which is a nice Easter treat for Doctor Who fans. So, yeah, pretty cool. Ugh. 
That's a nice uh, cup of tea there. Um, <laughs> lol. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a, an interesting meme. You know what? Uh, hats off to Jude for this one. Um, here we go. Here we go. So yeah, uh, Jude on Twitter has uh, put this meme POV. <laughs> You're writing for the first mainline Doctor of Colour. Um, so these two are the writers from Loki, I think. They were announced a while ago, though, so the names escape me and all that, and I can't remember if they're writing for this series. I think they are, though. And then you got Stephen Moffat, and you got Russell T. Davis. Yeah, I mean, I am surprised they actually haven't got, like, a, um, you know, like a writer from a different background and stuff to write for the first uh, Doctor, well, first mainline Doctor, of colour, should I say. Um, that is an interesting choice, but to be honest, I just want writers that aren't, you know, uh, <laughs> Russell T. Davis and Steve Moffat. So we are kind of getting that with the Loki writers, but... Mm. But yeah, no, that did kind of make me chuckle a little bit, but it, do, it does raise a good point there. Uh, apart from Daleks and... Oh, hang on. No, I missed one there. Sorry, Ryan. Uh, I like the new episode titles, but I do wonder if Disney actually have their own opinions on them as well. They probably did, but... Uh, I mean, apparently they don't have too much creative control, but... I don't know. You, you, you never really know what goes on behind the scenes, do you? So, yeah. Uh, apart from Daleks and Cybermen, what other returning monsters would you like to see 15 face? Well, the 15th Doctor is actually meant to be facing the Cybermen in the comic, I believe. Uh, coming up uh, in May. Um, so, yeah, I am uh, looking forward to... Uh, What's going down? Oh, what's this? Sorry, I just plugged the message. Da -da -da. So yeah, um, I think I'd probably say the Ice Warriors. Right, okay, cool. Um, right, let's get back on topic at hand. So, yeah, I'd, I'd take Ice Warriors or... Mm, I could imagine Shooty with the Weeping Angels would be really cool. We haven't had them... Well, we had them return not too long ago. Uh, yes, as the episodes drop each week, there'll be a lot of social media activity afterwards on the, from the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, etc., you know what, then? I'm just going to drop them um, as I make them. I, you know what, I'm just going to stick to that. I know it's going to be early in the morning, but eh, I guess, you know, if you guys want to catch up on my thoughts and opinions, you can watch them in the morning, I guess. But I'll, I'll, I'll experiment as it goes on, I think. Um, but yeah, I will definitely be staying up to watch Doctor Who because I'm, I'm dedicated <laughs> to what's going on. Uh, I'm sure Disney have had the same. They're providing a chunk of cash out after all. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, again, with the church on Ruby Road, that scene where the Doctor saves um, that woman from the falling snowman head. Um, he, uh, well, Disney, sorry, uh, gave Russell feedback about the original episode saying that the Doctor wasn't in it as much and they wanted more of him. And that scene was written, and it was part of reshoots in September or October last year. Well, and obviously the episode came out in um, December, so it was a last-minute change. It was a last-minute change, uh, which I thought was, um, you know, it was a good scene to include. I actually really liked the scene, so, um, you know. Yeah, you know, Disney could make some good changes, to be honest. Who knows? 
Who knows what they could uh, potentially throw our way. Uh, when will 15 Doctor Music come out? In terms of like a series album? I don't know. I think I think that'd be cool to see. But we didn't get one for Series 10, which people are still annoyed about. So we might get one, hopefully. Um, or maybe after the series finishes airing in June. No, it'll be July it finishes airing, I think. I'll catch them straight away as I'm Australian, but awfully late at the moment. Oh, bless you. Well, thank you so much, uh, Stephanie. And hey, I hope you enjoy the new episodes as well. My guess is the same as everyone else, and the trailer will release at 6pm. Yeah, I think it has been confirmed anyway that the trailer will drop at 6pm after each episode title has been revealed. So in about 12 minutes' time, we're going to get episode 6, which is going to be exciting. Ah, I wonder which one that's going to be. I'm guessing this one is going to be written by the uh, Loki writers, um, because obviously after that we've got series... No, we've got episode 7 and 8, which is going to be the two-part finale, guaranteed. Um, a guaranteed two-parter, which is obviously going to be written by Russell T. Davis. So, yeah. So, there's only going to be two episodes that aren't written by Russell. But, you know, mm, I'm, as much as I like him as a writer, as I said, I would have liked you know a bit, a bit more diversity. But, you know what? I'm not going to moan until I see the episodes. You know, that's certainly not anything I'm going to do. Yeah, Dot and Bubble does sound um, very ITV. Yeah, that is very. Uh, yeah, that that is a true statement. Also, yeah, it's a Sally Sparrow uh, quote there. I can't. Um, yeah, very relatable quote. Very relatable indeed. Hang on. You know what? Should I do an Instagram story to say that I'm live? On my nerd and Insta. Hang on. Hang on. Where's my... Oh, that that's my Instagram. Okay. So I'm a bit of an old man sometimes when it comes to this. Uh, okay, okay, I don't know what's going on here. Ah, what's going on? Oh, okay, that's made me 4K. I don't like that. See how ugly I am. Uh, I like RTD as a writer, but was a bit disappointed with the 60th and Christmas special scripts, as I expected better. Yeah. I, c I mean, I have overall enjoyed them, but uh, I don't think they've hit the same as the episodes that he, a lot of the episodes that he wrote uh, in the original era, to be honest. Uh, imagine if the finale title is one whole reveal video, and in fact we have to wait another hour. That would oh, that'd break my heart, honestly, because we've got a good pattern going at the moment. From Blink, Sparrow, and Nightingale, yes, 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 good old Blink. I've not been given any notification for you uploading in a while. Bloody YouTube at it again. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I mean, I do know. Um, there's a couple channels that I know that have had that as well. Uh, the Type Forty uh, podcast channel that I'm a regular guest on, they've had issues with that as well, and also people um, being unsubscribed from the channel as well, so, ah, yeah, just, um, it, like, if anything, just make sure that the bell's ticked, I guess, you know, if, if you want to be notified, um, but if not, then, ah, oh, YouTube, ah, drives me insane, anyway, I need to do this Instagram video, hang on, hey everyone, um, I am currently uh, live streaming right now, I am on YouTube, yes, live streaming, because Doctor Who titles, new ones, are being revealed right now, and we're getting a brand new trailer at 6pm, which is very exciting, I can't wait, um, and I'm sure people in the chat can't wait, so uh, yeah, um, we're going to be talking about that, we're going to be reacting to the trailer live, and it is going to be a good time, but yeah, if you want to go and check it, I've got a link here, and uh, yeah, see you all in a bit, peace! All right, yes, mortal, let's go. Let's get, let's get hyped. Let's, yeah, let's really get into it. Yeah, let's let's uh, get hyped. Let's get hyped. Yeah, three trailers. I mean, technically the first one was just a teaser, but 
I think after this, well, I think this trailer isn't going to be that long. I think it is just going to be, you know, clip, episode title, clip, episode title. Similar to what what we got with the 60th anniversary specials when they announced the uh, titles for them. Uh, hang on, let me just... Uh... Blimey, I feel like a granddad sometimes with uh, trying to um, get these going. Right, copy link. The summer. You can spell you but me and lots of channels have been having problems with YouTube notifications. Once I'm subscribed, one I'm subscribed to set up a Patreon so everyone could get notifications. Blimey, that's that's insane. I mean, I, hopefully YouTube can sort that out because you know the whole basis of subscribing is that you obviously you're supporting the creator. Um, and you're notified when they are, are uploading. Which, um, yeah, it's a little bit backwards, I can't I, in terms of uh, the whole uh, subscribing uh, function, to be honest. My bedroom is becoming a Doctor Who themed room. That's basically mine right now. <laughs> like, you know, I've got a Dalek, K9. Okay, I've got some Sonic stuff there as well. Uh, but yeah, I've got all my Doctor Who Comic Con photos. And then behind me, I've got my Doctor Who Comic Con photos and DVDs and big finish audios and stuff like that. Um, and uh, some uh, figure play sets as well. But yeah, I I am a very Doctor Who themed person at the end of the day, so. Okay, um All right, I'm very intrigued now um about the title for episode 6 because it <laughs> the title someone's just tweeted cuz the, the, there is that leak going around and I we're going to find out in 5 minutes, right? We 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 are going to find out in 5 minutes. But apparently, the title for episode 6 basically confirms that Captain Jack is coming back. And I don't know how to feel about that. I really don't know um, how to feel about that. Because, obviously, we know that it won't be John Barrowman. Let's be honest. It, it It's not going to be John Barrowman coming back. Like, it's really not. Um, I think that, like, those days are over. Um, and regardless of, you know, obviously the controversy and stuff. You know, regardless of how people feel about that, I think that character was, you know, he's had his time, um, you know, and for the whatever reason, the character, sorry, not the character, sorry, so for whatever reason, the actor can't return. Uh, obviously, yeah, the character should be rested. Obviously, yeah, make new characters, make the next Captain Jack, make the next River Song, or whatever. Not recast, and there are rumours that Jonathan Groff will be playing either a younger version of Captain Jack or just a recast Captain Jack, which is... I generally don't know how to feel about that. Yeah. So, uh, hmm. Yeah, Jonathan Groff playing uh, a new version of Captain Jack is... Uh, mm, yeah, a very interesting choice. Uh, oh, Stephanie said, I did get the notification for this live stream. I'm a premium member and wondering why I've not had problems with notifications and the end unsubscribe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, again, I, the whole YouTube algorithm and way things work. Again, I'm grateful for you being a premium member, so thank you so much. Um, but yeah, YouTube, the way things work with YouTube, honestly, I try and keep up with it, but then they announce changes or don't announce changes and then people work out the changes and it's just like, oh, it's, it's, it's so hard to keep track of. Um... Do you think uh, Susan Triad is Susan Foreman? That would be an interesting twist because people have um, been speculating about Susan Foreman returning because Russell did tease that. Yeah, so, because uh, he put on Instagram uh, asking, like, oh, yeah, what happened to Susan? 
It, you know, it was in reply to something about Susan Foreman. I think it was a post on the um, Doc Two Instagram, um, which is obviously where he, he, he's active on social media. So, I mean, I, I don't know what what could be the case with that. To be honest, but yeah, I mean, it, it would be an interesting twist that you know Susan has become evil or something. I'm surprised they're not also shown on other social media platforms like Facebook and Snapchat. I mean, they'll post the trailer on Facebook, but I, they're not as um, consistent with uh, you know the way um, Twitter is because I, I think a lot of companies use Twitter as like a news outlet, basically, or like a like a digital tabloid, essentially. Whereas Facebook, they do the more formal posts, you know, basically. Uh, I'm guessing episode six is the Regency era episode. Yes, yes, um, that is, um, yeah, yeah, I, I think that is likely, and then episode seven and eight will be the episodes with Unit and Mel, I think that will be the case. Uh, I hope the collector's toys will become a bit easier to find with the new series, yes, the B&M situation always annoys me, like the last one I was able to get, uh, I, I mean, I thought it was in my, um, <laughs> Was in my uh, room, but I don't know where it is. Yeah, the last one I was able to get was the um, the re-release of the 2005 Bronze Dalek and Dalek Sec. Um, which, yeah, you know, was cool to get, but I haven't been able to get any any of the other ones. Like the Conan Baker TARDIS one, I was really good that I wasn't able to get that. Yeah, so I don't like the idea of a recast, I agree. Let the character rest and come up with new characters. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think... <sighs> As much as, like, obviously, yeah, I have my opinions about why, um, you know, John Barrowman and um, Noel Clark as, as someone's brought up. Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, serious situations and stuff, um, you know, and it's, it's understandable why they wouldn't, re wouldn't be able to return and stuff. But don't recast the characters because, you know, they, they, they are still, you know, fan favourite characters at the end of the day. Um... And I think as well, when Captain Jack returned in Revolution of the Daleks, I think, you know, it was exciting seeing him in Fugitive of the Jadoon, but I felt like his role in Revolution of the Daleks, you know, there was no payoff, really, uh, for him coming back. And, you know, it was a shame, uh, as it felt like there was more. But, uh, yeah, that's how I feel about that. And obviously recasting, I, I just don't think uh, is a good idea, personally. But yeah, just make new characters. Oh, and we've got, we've got, we've got, we've got a new episode title. Let's let's flick over, and we're gonna have a new graphic to look at as well. Right here we go. Here we go. So, Rogue, written by Katie Heron and Bryony Redman, directed by Ben Chessel. Way an episode not written by. Russell T Davis or Stephen Moffat, <laughs> but it's the only one because the finale is going to be written by Russell T Davis, the two-part finale, I'm guessing. But yes, hosted by the Duchess of Pem Pembenton or whatever. So the Duchess is going to be played by Indra Varma, who pre previously played Susie Costello in uh, Doctor Who. So there's Lord Alex, Edward, I guess Lord Edward, Lord Adams, uh, and Rogue. Ooh, that gets me excited. So there's going to be some dancing. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool. So Rogue is the, the uh, next one. And we've got 29 minutes until we get the um, episode, the next episode's uh, title reveal. But blimey, blimey, ho 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 ho! Exciting, Rogue. Yes. So let's have a back. Let's have a look back at what the chat is saying. Uh, okay, so... Yeah, Doctor Who... I don't think Doctor Who goes out of its way to completely annoy fans. But I think, yeah, some of the decisions behind the scenes have just not been the best recently. I'll be honest. Yeah, they, they haven't. And I, as, as someone who obviously loves Russell D. Davis' writing and is still excited for this era, I can't lie. Yeah, there's, there's things that have annoyed me. I'd be... Uh, stupid to try and defend some of that stuff especially stuff that i think is wrong but obviously people might agree but you know agree with like what's going on or whatever that's up to them but i'm not going to deep it too much because it's a bloody tv show 
Like, no get hate against season one at all, but it seems like people are mixed on it. Yeah, I am getting that opinion. I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, I am si still seeing a fair few people excited, but I have seen people lose hype, especially with the release schedule. I think that's something that has completely thrown people off. And obviously, yeah, the situation with Millie Gibson um, as well, which people have uh, obviously got their opinions on. Do -do -do prediction. Jinx is the boss. Susan Twist is the one who waits. I don't know. Maybe the other way around. I feel like Susan Twist being the boss would be a very interesting one, but I don't know. At the same time... Hang on, I'm just getting a bit more comfortable. Um, at the same time, right, wouldn't it be interesting if... Uh, and hear me out, that we don't actually find out who the one who waits is until Shooty's like, last few episodes, so maybe not next series, the one after and we get Omega. That would be insane. Like, I would. I've always since that, you know, the one who waits was teased by the toy maker. I always wanted that to be like an end game villain, like a villain that's built up to, and is like, okay, he, you know, they're a serious threat. And having Omega come back would certainly raise the stakes because Omega is a character that you know there's a lot of lore about him. You know, he was. Uh, the reason why time travel was possible on Gallifrey and stuff like that. And especially with um, Russell, T. Russell T. Davis doubling down on the Timeless Child story arc. Probably going in a different direction to what Chimnall wanted. So I, I do have some hope there. But, um, yeah, um, I, I do think that Omega would be the one. I'd, I'd like to be the one who waits because that would be a serious threat. And obviously, you know, Omega's been out of the picture for a long time. Uh, you know, he was stuck in an antimatter universe. He tried to break out. Didn't go well. So, yeah, perhaps he's lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right time to come back. You know, with the Time Lords gone for the second time, you know, maybe he's finally seeing, you know, the revelations about the Timeless Child being brought to the surface, half the universe being destroyed by the Flux, uh, the boundaries between universes being altered by the Salt Line and stuff like that, you know, the Toy Maker and his legions arriving and stuff like that, and everything getting a bit supernatural. Omega coming back would just make perfect sense. Do -do -do. Finally, that's good. The the only other title I like is The Devil's Chord. Yeah, The Devil's Chord. I really like that. I, I do really like that title. But um, I do hope uh, Jinx is playing a new character. I, I, think, I think Jinx is playing a character called The Music Maker. I think. I think, I think. Not too sure, though. I do, I do remember seeing that drop. And Legendary 3D Gamer, yes, there is going to be a trailer in a couple of hours. I'm live streaming the episode titles um, as they're revealed because it all leads to the new trailer. It was already confirmed on social media pages. <laughs> Dot and Bubble will be the slug-like creature. Yeah, maybe. Dot and Bubble might actually be the Albion episode. Because if you think about it, like, tech and stuff, and maybe, like, fake news and stuff, could perhaps be the centre of that episode, which would be a very interesting one. Da -da -da. I don't think it, the Rani, because, I'll be honest, I don't think the Toymaker would fear the Rani, because if you can beat the Mass, you can beat the Rani. Exactly, yeah. And I think the only, unless it's a completely new villain, the one who waits, I feel like the one who waits would easily be Omega, because if he's, I don't know, if Omega's somehow stronger than the Toy Maker, we, then again, that doesn't make sense. Why the Toy Maker would be afraid of Omega, unless there's some, you know, character rewrite or something like that, with uh, the way Omega's written or something. I don't know. Perhaps. Uh, I just, I hate the way they are announcing the titles. Uh, just drop them in a trailer. The stupid to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's not the most effective way. I think it's just trying to get the conversation of Doctor Who built up throughout the day. Because obviously it's Easter Sunday as well. So I can kind of see what they're doing. I can kind of see it and I appreciate it. But also at the same time, it would have been nice to just get a trailer. Similar to what we got with the 6th anniversary specials. Like where it's like clip, um, episode title, clip, episode title, etc. Um, but yeah. Oh, hello, Jamie's Will from Glasgow. Nice. Really cool to know that I've got a fan in Glasgow. That's that, that's really cool, mate. Lovely to have you here. I uh, hope, hope you're doing well. So, yeah, the trailer will be dropping at 6pm. Very exciting. 
just over an hour away. Uh, we've got two more episode titles to go. Very exciting stuff. I bloody can't wait. Oh, yeah. Duh, duh, duh. If I'm being honest, I don't think Season 1 has any returning villains. I think they are all new from what I'm seeing. I think we're going to get a lot of new villains, but I think the finale will be the returning villains, and I think they're going to be the Daleks. I'll be honest. I think, yeah, we are going to get Daleks in the new season. Despite what Russell T. Davis has said, I think we are going to get a either a reveal um, at the end of the trailer, one of the new trailers or something, which would certainly get people talking, especially with a Dalek redesign, because they did tease that a while ago. Or perhaps, because Russell T. Davis has gone in the past where he wanted to keep the Daleks a secret. And there's that very infamous moment at the BAFTAs, I think in 2006, where the where the, a Dalek was meant to come out as a bronze Dalek to obviously be a part of Doctor Who getting an, an award or something. Um, and instead of the bronze Dalek, a black Dalek came out and everyone was like, well, thankfully no one really caught on, but it was like, wait, hang on a minute, why is there a black Dalek? We haven't seen that on screen yet. Uh, and obviously, yeah, series two was airing or was about to air, so like it was a bit, a bit awkward. But yeah, this was obviously before the internet was like a big thing. Like, imagine like if Twitter saw that today, it'd be like, oh my god, Daleks are back, confirmed, evidence, bang. But yeah, maybe Russell is trying to keep the Daleks a surprise, and I think, um, yeah, I, I, I think that uh, the Daleks showing up in in the finale would make a lot of sense. Maybe they don't show up until towards the end of the first part, and then the second part is like, you know, full-on Dalek invasion. Or perhaps, because, no, Russell T. Davis kind of um, does a, uh, like, a loose three-part, doesn't he? A lot. So, Boomtown is slightly connected to the part in other ways. Um, so, sorry, yeah, no. Yeah, Boomtown is slightly connected to... Um, I'm lost, lost my train of thought. Yeah, Boomtown is slightly connected to uh, Bad Wolf and the part in other ways. Fear her... Slightly loose or something bad is coming at the end, and then that leads into Army of Ghosts and Doomsday, and then obviously Utopia di is directly connected to um, the Sound of Drums and Last of the Time Lords, and then we've got what's the one after that? Yes, we've got uh, Turn Left, which is obviously di again directly connected to um, what's that episode called? Yeah, Stolen Earth and Journey's End. Blimey, my mind is playing a madness today, but yeah. They're all connected, and I feel like we could get that maybe at the end of the Regency Era episode. Maybe the Doctor's alerted to something going on in Monday Earth, and then boom, he, you know, he lands on Monday Earth, and then it's like, huh, wait, what? That would be insane. Like if, um, you know, he, he lands on Earth and there's just a Dalek saucer in the sky or something. That would be incredible. Or he's alerted to Dalek ships. Um, materialising above Earth or something. I think, yeah, just a twist like that to get people like, okay, I need to tune in next week. Uh, da -da -da. Right, okay, I've been rambling for a bit there with my little theory about Daleks. A twist about Daleks being in every uh, episode. That, that would be bloody incredible, but I don't think that'll happen, sadly. Uh, do, 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 what, uh, I don't, I don't get the overused Daleks need to take a break statement that's, like, saying give the TARDIS a break. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, as much as, like, I've been a bit tired of the Daleks, but I think that's down to just the design, I'll be honest, because I feel like the Daleks, it, it'd just be nice to see them with fresh coat of paint, even if it's just keeping the 2005 design and just giving them, like, I don't know, a classic look, silver and blue or something like that. But yeah, the Daleks are obviously very iconic and attached to Doctor Who, so obviously, yeah, you want to wheel them out every year. Yeah, maybe the Albion are in League with the Slugs. That, that could be part of the episode. Maybe it's like, you know, about brainwashing people to vote for this political party or something like that. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, the trickster coming back would um, certainly be a uh, welcome addition. I would love to see the tricks come back but God knows if that'll happen. Uh, I think something marketed as season one means that it won't rely too much on previous lore just things set up and paid off within the season. Yes, that will be the case. Um, 
But I think as well, obviously with previous law, I mean, they can obviously reintroduce previously established law, but like kind of briefly explain it. So I don't know if they did bring back Susan or the Rani or whatever, they can do similar to what they did with the Master in Series 3. They can just be like, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, you know, we used to be friends. Now we're not. I, I turned good, obviously being the Doctor, and he, the Master, turned bad. And that's kind of just like the basic... Um, premise of the Doctor and the Master's relationship and you can have someone like that maybe explain it with the Rani and then boom or Susan Foreman okay she used to be my granddaughter now she's evil boom someone like that maybe ah <sighs> okay where are we at uh, I need purple and gold for Daleks I've always wanted golden cybers men to the point that I drew it oh that's really cool that you drew someone like that uh, but yeah purple and gold Daleks hmm that seems like a shout uh, the reason I truly watch Doctor Who is for the new inventive monsters. Yes, me too. I love them. I love them. Actually, yeah, I prefer when we get like new stuff. Like I remember being introduced to the science for the first time in Series 6, and I was like, whoa, this is terrifying. And now they're kind of household names as well. So, you know, that's really cool. Really cool. Um, hey, hey there, just joined the stream. What's been your favourite title so far? Ooh, The Devil's Chord. Easy. Yeah, The De Devil's Chord, episode two. I really like that. But what's yours? What's everyone else's? Let me know in the comment section down below. Let, let's get excited. Let's get talking and just, ooh, just really, really sort of, yeah, vibing. Uh, I will admit I liked the special idea Chimmel had, not them appearing in a season, but in special instead. Yeah. Yeah, 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 because, hang on, yeah. So, Resolution, Revolution of the Daleks, Eve of the Daleks, and The Power of the Doctor. I mean, they were technically in flux. But it was like a minor cameo, so it like it it is what it is. But uh, yeah, I think yeah, the Daleks having like being the main villains of uh, the specials was very very interesting in terms of changing the pace. And we had like one off, um, you know, uh, designs and stuff, which I thought was really cool, like the Recon Scout Dalek and um, Eve of the Daleks. We had a different take on the Bronze Daleks with them, like basically being like slasher villains. Which was uh, very interesting, and you know what? Oh, you know, it was someone that didn't really like overall uh, the some of the ideas from the last era. You know, the Dalek specials I did really enjoy. Um, I will say that, and it was nice to see the Daleks being shown in a, in a different way. And I do like that with uh, legacy villains, where you know, writers instead of just having the Daleks as just you know trigger happy um, mutants, we get something new with them and. Yeah, you know, can't fault anyone for trying something new. I certainly can't. Yeah, Boom is very intriguing, but I think I'm also intrigued because it's Moffat as well. And I have kind of missed some Moffat-isms. So, yeah, who, who knows what Moffat is going to bring to the table. Jonathan Groff as a younger Captain Jack. I've heard a lot of people saying it's possible. Yeah, I have as well. Um... And it does get me very interested in what is going down in, uh, you know, th this series. But as a younger Captain Jack, I don't know. Part, part of me feels like that is going to cause a lot of discourse. I mean, say discourse, like, it's stuff on Twitter. People just end up you know, ranting about it or whatever. But I don't know. I can feel like bringing back a younger version of character uh, recast and stuff, especially after you know everything that's happened. I don't know. Like I, I, I feel like it's just going to be just not needed, and unless they're going to bring back the actual Captain Jack, then why bring back the younger version? I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, so I'd like to see the Tricks of Grask and the Hoinks show up again. I feel like that'd be really cool. The Hoinks was the one from Love and Monsters with the teeth. Yeah, I remember that monster. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing any of them come back. Especially the Tricks. I can see Russell Hugh Davis doing what he did with Series 1, where they can have this two-part of... Uh, part 1 being a normal episode, and then end, a Dalek just appears as a cliffhanger for Part 2, the finale. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so yeah, it plays out like a normal episode, and then part two, you get heavy Dalek action. Oh my god, that'd be really cool. Because I've always imagined, since seeing the filming episode, 
Um, yeah, since I've like, seen the filming for the finale, the the scenes with uh, the Doctor and Mel on that uh, little moped thing, I could just imagine them like rushing down like a busy street in London because you know there's Daleks you know flying across the sky and exterminating people, and it's going to be very action packed, and that just excites the hell out of me. And um, you know, seeing them, you know, like a Doctor and his companion going against the Daleks, it's like, oh, that's that's Doctor Who for me. You know, a Dalek invasion on Earth. It's Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy. And that just gets me excited. It really does. It really does. Oh, John Hart. Oh, yes. Yes, that's John Hart. Oh, yes. That's uh, Captain Jack's partner from uh, Series 2 of Torchwood, yeah. Do we know if... Oh, hang on. I missed one there. Sorry. Uh, I got a feeling that the... Uh, Part of this season will be history has changed and people throughout time are going missing from history. That could be the case, yeah. Because, you know, there's Mavity instead of Gravity. As much as that bloody annoys me because I feel like Mavity is just so bloody childlike. But, you know, ah, uh, cool. I mean, it, it, might, it might catch on with me eventually. Um, but, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think that's a reasonable theory. And, hey, I mean, if, they, if there's any truth on this room about Jonathan Groff being Captain Jack... Maybe because history is changing. Captain Jack looks like Jonathan Groff now instead of John Barrowman. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, yeah. Okay, what else we got? Groff's character could be a villain turned good if we see him saluting someone in the trailer. Maybe, maybe. And perhaps he is a time agent as well. I mean, I think it's already been confirmed that he's a time agent, but. Yeah. Very interested. <laughs> oh, so far I'm on episode 2 or 3 of series 3 of Torchwood and after I've watched Torchwood I'm going to make one second video of it oh, ok really cool really cool nice yeah Torchwood's really good I swear if I see one bronze Dalek yeah tell me about it honestly I just want to see some new Dalek designs. Hey, you know what? I'd rather have the bloody Teletubby Daleks back at this point. You know what I mean? Give me my Paradigm Boys and I'd be happy. Uh, what time will the trailer drop? It will be dropping at 6pm. It really will. 6pm. We're going to be getting our Daleks. Are you getting a Daleks? Well, hopefully. But I don't know why I said Daleks. Reason why I think there's... Yes, yeah, that song by um Yeah, that song by um David Bowie, isn't it? Yeah. Um yeah, it could have been used for a reason. Because obviously, yeah, Ruby's life is changing and stuff like that. Um and then obviously, you know, history's changing and stuff and yeah, it fits into what the season and you know what the plot of the season could be about. Yeah, six PM it is confirmed for six PM. It is confirmed. Da 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 could the trickster be showing up as he has a habit of meddling with time? The hooded figure in the trailer looks familiar. Now no, that's gonna be uh Ruby's mom. But there has got to be a reason why Ruby was left there. And there was a plan. There was a plan, obviously, for the Saturday Night Adventures. Unfortunately, Series 5 wasn't able to continue filming because of Elizabeth Sladen being diagnosed with cancer and she passed away um, of the illness, unfortunately. Uh, but the plan for the Series 5 finale was that the baby that was left on Sarah Jane's doorstep, called Sky. Uh, was left there because of the trickster and that the trickster was uh, doing it in order to um, basically as a scheme of getting revenge on Sarah Jane um, and so that somehow uh, Sky was like basically like the trickster's kid or something like that um, but yeah obviously Sky ended up um, defeating the trickster and imprisoned him I think so perhaps there could be 
parts of this storyline being reworked for Doctor Who. So maybe, you know, the reason why uh, Ruby's mother left Ruby on uh, the church doorstep is like, yeah, uh, is uh, because that, you know, she's trying to keep Ruby safe from another villain. So perhaps, yeah, it could be the trickster. I would love to see the trickster come back. 100%. Um, I've got a theory that I've been cooking up. Okay, what is this theory? Ruby is a trap for the Doctor laid by the trickster. They were meant to do that for Series 5. Yes, yeah, you are right. Yeah, that would be really cool. That would be really cool. That would be a really cool um, concept to see revived. Because I, I remember hearing about it. I was like, yeah, this, this, this would be perfect. This really would be perfect to see... Um, you know, happen. Yeah, like you know, it 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 would provide a different um, companion dynamic as well. And perhaps you know that might be why Ruby doesn't hang around after this series. But I, I know she has like small roles in the upcoming series. But there's obviously a new companion and stuff. So we got seven minutes until the next episode title drop as well. Woohoo! Very exciting. And then we got half five for the last one, and then six pm we got the trailer. Exciting times! Woohoo! Stretching. Yeah, trailer at six pm. Yeah, I've got to keep saying that. Uh, Dalek Collector, not being mean, but I think the Paradigm Daleks are overhated and better than the Bronze. Now, well, better than Bronze. I, I, I mean. The bronze Daleks I've grown tired of, but the Paradigm Daleks I've never hated them, never. As much as like yeah, the way they're intro introduced, um, you know, is uh, yeah, like I don't know, like I I, I felt like Victory of the Daleks was probably not the episode for me, but I did like the um, design and stuff, and you know, even when they got the metallic makeover for uh, Asylum of the Daleks. It was nice to see them, but unfortunately they just ditched them all together, which sucked. You know, it sucked. It sucked hard. Susan Twist as the Rani. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice, but I don't think she is. But then again, the Rani getting involved with evil tech does have a ring to it. I'm not going to lie, I love the, the Dalek from the Children in Need special to be the new Dalek. Whilst it's a Genesis Dalek, it feels different with the claw. Yes, maybe. Maybe. Or just that design in general would be actually cool to see come back. You know, a classic looking Dalek. You know, maybe you could have, like, the general design, but perhaps you can still have, like, the glowing blue stalk or something like that, or something else um, with the stalk. But I feel like it would be really cool. Especially, yeah, that Genesis Dalek design. Oh, it's bloody beautiful. I mean, it's not exactly the same as this, but... Hang on. Oh, 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 got this. This looks bloody incredible. Wow, like sort of similar to the Genesis design, I think. But yeah, it looks bloody beautiful. I really like this design. Ah, oh, staring to my eyes. Ah, oh, yeah. Uh, can you do a stream reacting to people's Doctor Who videos, aka mine? I mean, I might do, but generally I just do news videos and speculation. So, I mean, I don't know. I hope the Daleks have a good rest this season. Probably not, but I hope to have them in season two for the Big Bad. I mean, I I would like to see the Daleks face off against Shooty rather, sooner rather than later. But um, after that, you know, if they're not in season two, I won't be too bothered. But as long as we've got a return in episode like at least one per season i think that's probably the like the best mix to have so maybe season two you get the cybermen or the whipping angels or something like that you know would you rather a proper halloween uh hang on, was that sorry would you rather a proper halloween special or another new year's day special uh halloween special would be really cool the waters of mars is one of my favorite episodes so getting something like that again something creepy would be awesome uh, I think they're saying the Rani for Shooty's last in. Yeah, potentially. Potentially. Uh, Dalek Collector Earth stop saying Daleks need a rest. They don't. They need a better story. They're fine. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think they need to be rested. I mean, if anything, to give more villains the spotlight, then, yeah, you know, if they don't get a season, they don't get a season. 
you know, it's it, like an appearance in a season. But I think, um, yeah, I'm not against them uh, showing up again because yeah, it's, they're, they're the Daleks. You know, they're, they're iconic and just cool and stuff. So, yeah, I'd like to see the Daleks come back. Of course I would. Not against them. Not against them coming back. Not my pepper pots. You know what I mean? I love them to pieces. Right, anyway, we are three minutes away from the episode title reveal. Ooh, I wonder what it's going to be. The Episode 7, is it? I think it is Episode 7. Or am I being dumb? Or, or, yeah, it is Episode 7, yeah, because we've had Rogue, which is Episode 6. So, two minutes away. Oh, oh hang on. Let me um show this tweet as well. Hang on. Ah, another, another one to make uh, us laugh. Uh, from crazy ass moments in Doctor Who history, Doctor Who announces an episode titled Rogue. Releasing on the 8th of June, 2024. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, they'll probably work that out from the uh, premiere date, but it will be the first episode of the show in 1,574 days to not be written by either Russell T. Davis, Stephen Moffat, or Chris Chimnall. So, obviously, yeah, they're all, um, you know, showrunners or whatever, or former showrunners. So, yeah, that's that's true, because Flux, there was only one episode that was uh, co-written with someone that was Maxine Alderson, I think. But the fact <laughs> that's been pointed out has really kind of put things into perspective here. Like, oh my god. Oh, <laughs> that's made me laugh a little bit. I can't even lie. Oh, wow. Imagine that being like, you know, a thing. But still, here's what it is. Oh my god, that's made me laugh. <laughs> Blimey. Let's see what you're all saying. Okay. New title looks intriguing. Yeah, the new titles do look intriguing. Yeah, the opinion on the new episode titles being simple, I mean, they'd be easier to remember, I guess. That's probably why. So many classic villains that could be brought back. Omega, Crinoids, Morbius, etc. Yes. Morbius, I'd like, I'd like to see come back. I think that'd be really cool. Okay. We've got a new title, new title, new title. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. What? Okay, that, I've completely messed the video up there, but you, yeah, you, you get the impression there. So, wow. Wow. Okay. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Wow. Okay. Um, okay. A very interesting title. Oh. Okay. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Wow. 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 That's interesting. That is very interesting. Like, yo... Tell me, guys, what do you all think? Let me know. It's very interesting, the title, though. The title of a title is actually quite interesting. Wow. Davina must be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but my internet went out. Anything else revealed? Yeah, we've just had a new episode title reveal. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Yes. Oh, exciting stuff. Yeah. Woohoo. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, ooh. Stephanie, uh, don't they have to use the Daleks at least once per season? Uh, to retain the rights to use them from the nation to state. Now, Moffat, when he was showing, I denied that being the case. But I wouldn't be surprised. But to be honest, I'd, like if as, as Dalek Collector uh, has said that I'd rather them be used at least once per season to keep them in the show than not have them at all. Because, you know, the Daleks are iconic and it would just be a shame if the Daleks end up getting lost 
uh, by the BBC, and then we end up getting like Dalek uh, spin-off shows like K9 that are dreadful. Um, and just yeah, <laughs> I'd just rather have you know that be, be the situation. The forecoming storm. Oh, okay, interesting. Uh, Davina must be back. Yeah, uh, yeah. The Doctor Light episode is it? Is 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 that the Doctor Light episode? The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Oh, I can't believe it! The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Exciting. Hang on, just double check. Is is that written by Russell T Davis? I actually didn't even look. Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, hang on. Is that who I think is directing it? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Jamie. Jamie Dong. Okay, not Jamie Dong. No. Uh... Okay, never mind. No. Okay, I thought it was. Uh... The one who directed um, Flux and some of the Chimel era ones. But no, that's Jamie Magnuson. Never mind. <laughs> Whoopsies. Um, oh, yeah, The Forecoming Storm would be a great title. Yeah, it would be a twist on things. I've got to go now, but I'm so excited for season one. See you, nerd. Then, oh, see you later, Ryan. I hope you have a fantastic day, mate. Uh, I don't know if it will be Dr. Light. I just think we could get more Ruby. Yeah, I think that'd be cool, especially before she leaves as well. I think that'd be a nice way to really show her character off. I think 73 Yards is supposed to be the Doctor Light episode. But yeah, perhaps, perhaps. The Legend of Ruby Sunday, though, that's got me intrigued. We've got one more to go as well. We've got, like, 25 minutes. Ah. Are there no more two-parters? I think they're all going to be standalone, except for the last two. Even that's not confirmed, but just going by Russell being Russell, I think, yeah, the last two are going to be a two-parter. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. That, that's got me excited. Whew. Blimey, I'm just really excited. Feeling it now. Yes! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Ho, ho, ho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, is that a title for one of the episodes, Legend of Ruby Sunday? Yeah, the Legend of Ruby Sunday is for episode 7, um, which is going to be... Yeah, which is going to be um, the... Yeah, for episode 7, which I'm guessing is going to be the first part of the two-part finale. Again, two-part finale isn't confirmed, but just how Russell T. Davis um, <laughs> is with Doctor Who right now and playing it safe, I think... Um... Yeah, it's going to be... Yeah, it's it's uh, going to be a cool title. Yeah, it's going to be exciting.
Right, yeah, sorry, just catching up with the chat as well. Apologies for being quiet there, people. Yeah, let's go, let's get hyped. I can already feel this season, uh, sorry, this season, uh, will be there with one of the best. Russell is going to do it again. You're going to get people talking about Doctor again, I can feel it. I bloody hope so. I bloody can't wait. Yeah, I bloody can't wait for it. It is going to be an exciting season indeed. 100%. I am vibing with it. It is going to be a vibe. 100%. But whilst we are at it, and I am going to uh, do this whilst we are waiting, I'm just going to pin this to the chat. Uh, link to... So, obviously, I mentioned earlier in the stream that I'm doing a fundraiser at the moment. So, this is going to be pinned. Obviously, you don't have to don donate. It's not obviously not forced. But, uh, yeah, that is my... Uh, oh, here it is pinned now. So, yeah, this is my fundraiser where I'm doing, like, a sponsored run, uh, essentially. And I am going to be um, doing a 5K, 5, 5K run uh, in June, uh, which is very exciting. Um, I've never done anything like this before. I'm nervous. 100%, um, but I'm just looking forward to, uh, yeah, do, do, doing something good, doing something good. Well, I'm okay, so we're like 20 minutes out from the new episode title. We are doing something new. Yeah, not gonna lie, I didn't enjoy any of uh, Jodie's era. I love Jodie as the Doctor, but I wish she would have had Russell's writing. Yeah, I felt like the th thing is with um, Jodie's Doctor, um, a lot, a lot of it was just inconsistent. I mean, a lot of the characters, the long-term characters, um, were just inconsistent as hell, um, and that just put a downer on it for me personally. So, yeah, that's how I feel about all that. Honestly, yeah, it was just a lot of inconsistency, and uh, yeah, I just wish things were different. I can't lie. Which sucks. Yeah, you know, it, it, it sucks a lot. You know, I, I did generally do wish things were different. But, um, hey, you know, she, she might return in the future, and obviously, big finish. You know, big, big finish are probably going to have something planned with her in the next few years, if they haven't already, um, and she'll reprise her role. That'd be cool, but uh, Russell has also said he doesn't want to do uh, any celebrations for the twentieth anniversary of the revival. So yeah, I think that is going to be uh, yeah not a thing. Obviously, you know he's ruled that out, so we're not going to get any multi-doctor stuff anytime soon. Which, which is a shame, you know. I'd bloody love to see doctors hanging around with each other. You know what I mean? <sighs> very exciting, very exciting indeed. Yeah, sorry for like not talking a lot right now. Um, I'm just literally trying to catch up with the chat and stuff. And uh, oh, we've got 420 views in total. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, trying to catch up with everything. Um, and uh, yeah. I think the Timeless Child is a good idea, but it didn't need to anywhere that's what ruins it yeah i mean yes and no for me but also as well i'm willing to see where it develops that's that's all i really feel about it it's a, it like it's a myth from me i'm like i'm i'm up for it you know changes and stuff but i've got to be enticed i've got to be enticed by everything that's going on so that's where i see uh yeah that's where i sit with that really but God knows.
<sighs> right, where are we at now? So we've got like 18 minutes until the last episode title drops. And I need to try and get some food. I do need to try and get some food as well at some point. Oh my god. Oh my god, okay, this is hilarious. I've got to show this off on stream. Okay, right, where are we going? So, let me change over. Wow. Oh my god, this this is iconic. This is bloody iconic. Oh my god, I love this. I love this. Let's go, indeed. The Legend of Ruby Sunday. Oh my god, I, I love it. I love it. Iconic. Iconic. Wow. Just wow. That's that that that's just something else. It really is. It really is. Ah, uh, bloody love it. I love it. I love it. But yeah, Twitter seems to be uh a little bit um well, they're sharing the same opinions as me. It's like, oh yeah, there should be more um, new ideas. Which, uh, n sorry, no, new ideas, new writers and stuff like that. Which I think, um, yeah, should be the case. That should be the case indeed. You know, get, you know, get some new writers in. But, you know, the fact that, yeah, it's been four years as well. Four years. Um, you know, I mean, I, I I think that's also why I'm probably going to be more excited for episode six more than anything. But um, yeah, we'll we'll uh, see what happens. I guess we'll see what happens. Okay, so Okay, right. Fifteen minutes honestly, this is dragging now. You know what? I did kind of mess up with the um stream um because like I was like, Oh yeah, I'll stream and just wait until the trailer drops, but it's a long time to be sat, so I might end the stream maybe when the last episode drops. That's episode title drop, sorry. But then again, I don't know, it's like half an hour, so... Yeah, I mean... I don't know. Yeah, I might do. Just because, obviously, grab food and stuff like that. Um, to make sure I'm fed and watered ready for the um, the trailer. Dropping at six. Oh, it's pretty cool. Just because, yeah, it's a long time to be sat at my desk. It's a really long time, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. 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 Because, like, time is literally dragging just, like, being sat here. I'm just having a look now to see what people are saying on Twitter. Um... Also, yeah. Hang on. There, there, there was that thing... Uh... Uh, about episode six confirming that Captain Jack's coming back. Rogue. I, I, I mean, I don't know. Perhaps. Uh, so yeah. Oh yeah. The cancer fundraiser is. Uh, yeah, I'm raising money for cancer research. Doing a sponsored run. So I can, uh, you know. Yeah, raise raise money and stuff. You know, and uh, raise money for a good course. And also, you know, be active as well. You know, I love going for walks and runs and stuff, so I may as well do it for charity, which is uh, the way I'm viewing it. Uh, yeah, Jodie was let down uh, by the writing uh, when she was cast. I thought Chibnall, this better be good, and yeah, yeah, that that's that's true. And it's a shame because Chibnall, I liked his writing elsewhere. You know, in Torchwood and. Uh, Um, 
Yeah, like in Torture and Broadchurch. But unfortunately, yeah. Mm. I mean, his Doctor Who stuff was uh, a bit, a bit meh. And I guess... Uh, yeah, I've completely lost my train of thought though. Yeah, so yeah, I was just disappointed by Chimmel's writing, to be honest. It, you know, not not to wish him ill or anything, but yeah, kind of sucked. Kind, kind, you know, yeah, kind of sucked, and you know, it's a shame that the first female Doctor didn't get the 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 good writing and the good scripts that she deserved. But yeah. Still, we move. What episodes do you think the titles are? So the titles are already out already. So we've got... What have we got now? So we've got Space Babies. Yeah, Space Babies. The Devil's Cord. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> the Devil's Cord. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, 73 Yards. Uh, Dot and Bubble. Rogue. And then the Legend of Ruby Sunday, and there's one more to be revealed. I've, it's mad that I could already sort of get them from the top of my head. Legend of Ruby Sunday title has um, me concerned about Russell T. Davis hasn't moved on from making the companion the most important person in the universe for every series last season. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. It does get me. Uh... Yeah, this is uh... yeah, a trope that I don't want to see continued, to be honest. Because it does, yeah, it does get a bit tiresome. I just want an ordinary companion. A very, a very ordinary companion. You know, instead of someone just being like the next god or something. <sighs> right. Yeah, the Devil's Chord is Jinx, but yeah, I I am in, intrigued by that episode. That like that's the episode that I am excited for. I really am anticipating that one. Uh, da -da -da. Wait, I'm only seeing this live as a new trailer dropped or something dropped. So episode titles are dropping right now on social media. Uh, if you want to go and check them out uh, with some cool little graphics, and then we've got a brand new trailer at six p.m. So forty minutes time. Which should be fair. I might just stick around and just do the stream all together. I'm not fully decided yet. I, I might do, I might not. Uh, maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll, we will see indeed. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm not expecting like a big trailer similar to what we got last week. I think it'll just be a clip from an episode, title reveal, clip from the episode, title reveal. Just so, you know, people know about it and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, we get a little bit more of a glimpse of what's going down with Doctor Who. Urgh. Honestly, I am so excited. We've got nine minutes until the uh, finale reveal as well. So, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, does it mean she's not real? Not necessarily, no. Um, I think it might just be, a, a, like, a story might... You know what? You know what? A bit of a bold theory, but imagine this episode is, like, a retelling or dramatisation of her adventures with the Doctor or something like that. That would be really cool. That would be cool. Let's see. Space, Space Babies is the Boogeyman. Boom is the mine one. I think 73 Yards is the bird one. And Dot and Bubble is the butterfly effect. Rogue is Jonathan Groff. And uh, Final is a two-part. Yeah, I think that's pretty much spot on, to be honest. The bird one. I can't remember the bird. what the bird one's going to be, though. But yeah, Dot and Bubble is the butterfly effect. So that would be really cool. Yeah, Jonathan Groff is definitely in Rogue. But I think he's meant to be a reoccurring character. So he might be in the finale. Or he might be introduced beforehand, maybe. 
But, uh, uh, Jonathan Groff. Ho, ho, ho. I wonder what he's playing. Captain Jack, probably. I mean, I hope not. Jonathan Groff. Let's have a quick, quick little Google search. Uh, so there is one on the TARDIS wiki. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, just, I'm trying to find, find the source for where this rumour comes from. Oh, the people with the bird feathers. Yeah, okay. The Duchess turns into a bird. Okay. Right, okay. Interesting. I mean, I'm... Down for whatever. I oh, am. Yeah. Seems exciting. Okay. Interesting. Interesting episode of concepts. I can't lie. Seven minutes away. It feels like it's bloody dragon. Bloody dragon indeed, mate. Boom, boom. Shit, shit, the room. Yeah, to be fair, I think, yeah, I probably will end the stream after the episode title reveal and then just do a reaction and a breakdown um, of the episode well the trailer when it drops because i don't think it's going to be a big trailer anyway but i'm also bloody hungry as well so we shall uh, be meeting up again soon but obviously yes yeah, six minutes to go until all that happens but i'll be dropping my final theory on well the last episode once it drops ah will it hurry up and drop though ah, hurry Yeah, they should have done this every 15 minutes. Yeah, because obviously it fits in with the 15th Doctor and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it would have made a lot of sense even like starting it um, later. Mm, the Legend of Ruby Sunday. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a title I can't really get out of my head already. It's got me thinking so many things. It really has. Very intriguing. Yeah, literally, like, Twitter is... There's a lot of people mentioning about that they wanted uh, new writers. I, I mean, there's still season two, guys. Still season two. Four minutes, four minutes. <laughs> Let's get excited. It'll be interesting to see. Um, has it like no DNA background on it? Yeah, exactly. Because, like, what happened to her mother? It does get very intriguing. Very intriguing. A little bit too intriguing. I mean, this four minutes is dragging, honestly. I just want to see what the final title is, and then we're going to have a complete list. A complete list, which is uh, cool. Just cool and do. Uh, I keep on... Uh 
refreshing Twitter to see if there's like anything. Um, yeah, if there's anything bloody. Uh, Been leaked or you know any any funny stuff in in the meantime, but there's nothing, nothing. But three minutes, bloody counting it down. So yeah, the Duchess. Yeah, that that will be the bird one, I guess. Yeah. RTD did say the season had a mythical theme, so maybe Ruby is part of that. Yeah, perhaps. I mean, you know, there's a lot of gods and stuff like that, obviously, because the implications of the giggle and the salt line and stuff like that. So, you know, yeah, maybe uh, Ruby Sunday is a god as well. Would certainly make a lot of sense. Right, two minutes, here we go. Honestly, the last episode of the series, what is it going to be called? Final predictions now. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments, because I'm bloody curious. I'm bloody intrigued. Do, 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 38... Oh, 40 viewers. Blimey, a lot of people are jumping on right now. Hello, everyone. Let me know. Final predictions for the uh, thingy, the trailer. Let me know. Because ah. I'm bloody hyped. I'm bloody hyped. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Let's get it good. Let's get it good. One minute to go. Oh, my here we go. Anticipation. The anticipation. <sighs> Actually, it's seconds away. Seconds away. Imagine if the le last title was called D, just D. And all we knew it was Daleks or something. Oh, that would be interesting if they didn't reveal what the D was. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. We are getting there. We are getting there, people. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. Right. Right, notification. And it is... <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, interesting, 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 Empire of Death. What? Okay. That's got me very intrigued. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Empire of Death. Alright, can we just talk about that for a second? Empire of Death. Also, hang on, where are my keys? Bear me one second, people. I want to see what everyone's going to say. Empire of Death. Empire of Death. That is a very interesting title. Oh, my God. Also, I need to find my keys. Where are they? Okay, uh, I need to find my keys. Well, YouTube has a delay. The half hour ticked over for me nearly a minute earlier. Okay. That doesn't surprise me. Bloody YouTube. Okay, I generally don't know where I put my keys. That's an interesting concept. Oh, there. Right here. Interesting. And I dropped them on the floor. Cool. There we go. <sighs> interesting. Woucher. Yeah, Empire Empire of Death though. 
Ooh, that's got me intrigued. That really has got me intrigued. Empire of Death. But why? Why is it the Empire of Death? Is it the Daleks? Is it the Daleks? I don't know. It, ah, it just kind of makes me feel like we're getting Daleks. It really does. You know, Empire of Death, well, Daleks bring death and destruction, and oh my god, okay, we've got a casting announcement, we've got a casting announcement, we've got a casting announcement as well, oh, here we go, okay, ha ha ha, right, and we've got a, uh, oh, what's going on with my camera, okay, we've got a um, promo image as well, hang on, apologies guys, there we go. Right, so, from Tyler Central, Golda Rochevel. I'm uh, very sorry if I've um, mispronounced uh, their name there. So, starring in episode one, Space Babies, Golda will portray the character of Jocelyn, whom the Doctor and Ruby collide with on their first adventure in the TARDIS together. And that is a uh, brand new promo image there, courtesy of TARDIS Central. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, but yes, uh, a lot of uh, monitors behind it. Blimey. Yeah, so getting other bits of news as well, which is exciting. I guess we'll get more casting information if there's any new cast included in the scripts. Possibly. Possibly. I mean, God only knows. Yeah, Daleks would make sense. Yeah, 100%. What returning characters could be? Uh, ooh. Oh, I mean, we, we are going to get Unit in the finale, I think. Oh, well, yeah, because Mel is there as well. That's the moped scene. And it would just make sense that the Daleks turn up. I wonder how, like, the Daleks would fit into this new supernatural narrative. Maybe that's the reason why their design has changed. We're going to get supernatural-esque Dalek. Which, blimey, that sounds bloody terrifying in my head. Uh, I wonder if we'll get... Uh, the Minister of War mentioned back in Capaldi's era. You know what? That is a good theory. And I would like to for that to finally reach full circle. That would be bloody insane if we get the Minister of War. I'd love that. Oh my god, I would love that so much. Oh. So yeah, May, it's where it all happens. So yeah, if you aren't around here and haven't subscribed, subscribe because I'm going to be covering all of these episodes. We've got um, <laughs> we've got Space Babies, The Devil's Called, Boom, 73 Yards, Dot and Bubble, Rogue, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, and Empire of Death. Hoo, hoo, hoo. The Empire of Death really does intrigue me because obviously it's uh, you know, the finale and stuff and you know Ruby Sunday leaving after one season. Is she going to die? Nah. But it's still, it's still very exciting. Empire of Death is just... Oh, that really does send tingles down my spine. It really does. Oh, hang on. There's more guest stars. Um, hang on. I'm just reading the... Because there's a BBC press release as well. Okay, let's read the press release. Yeah, because there's quite a few things here. Let's read it. Okay. Let, let, let's head over. It gives us something to do. Because you know what? I may as well just stream till 6. <laughs> I may as well. <laughs> but yeah, there we go. Golda Richevel, again, really sorry if I mispronounced uh, her name there, uh, jumps aboard the TARDIS as episode titles are revealed. Um, so yeah, a statement from Russell T. Davis that, you know, uh, it, it's amazing to see the whole world appreciate uh, her talents because... Oh, she's in Bridgerton. Okay. And it's been an absolute joy to invite to Carter to help launch uh, Shooty and Millie's first season. Now, Bridgerton is quite popular, so it doesn't surprise me that that's getting um, a lot of attention. So, uh, yeah. I might as well... Reaction... Boom. Uh, okay, so yeah, sorry guys, I just changed the title there. Whoopsie, did that on stream. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so yeah, Russell T. Davis, showrunner, nice. As Doctor Who gears up for its highly anticipated simultaneous uh, global premiere this May, the episode titles have now been revealed for the season, as well as its incredible guest star who's joined uh, the TARDIS. So as another Easter treat, viewers will be given another official uh, trailer on the Doctor Who social media channels at 6pm before first airing on BBC One. Wait, hang on. That's today. Oh, so it will be airing on BBC One later today as well. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, that is the guest star there. So, rounding off the explosive double bill uh, is the previously announced Jinx Monsoon, who stars in The Devil's Court as the Doctor's most powerful enemy yet. Uh, that's a very interesting statement, and uh, hopefully uh, Jinx's character lives up to that statement, because, blimey, I would love to see a powerful villain. Uh, in this episode, the Doctor and Ruby step back in, uh, to the 60s to meet the Beatles. So new episodes will then debut weekly across BBC iPlay, BBC One, and outside the UK on Disney+, Plus, where available with a Stephen Moffat penned adventure up next, followed by 73 Yards, Dot and Bubble, Rogue, and a massive two-part finale spread across two weeks titled The Legend of Ruby Sunday and The Empire of Death. So it has been confirmed. Yes, we are going to be getting... Um, yeah, we are going to be getting two-part finale and there are some brilliant uh guest stars here that i don't know if these have already been announced uh oh no the, these are freshly new uh names here well, I, I, none of them i seem to recognize but still exciting you know they're talking about it that's that's that, that that's brilliant news and we've obviously got um you know a lot of names here as well uh previously announced so yeah, Space Babies, Devil's Chord, Boom, 73 Yards, Dot and Bubble, Rogue, The Legend of Ruby Sunday, and Empire of Death. A two-part finale. Yes! Get in. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. I, oh, Yeah. We're here. We're here for it. All right. Let's see what YouTube is saying. Um, it's... What returning characters... Oh, well, I mean, I don't know what the returning characters could be. Could be anyone. Could be anyone. I uh, wonder if we'll get the... Oh, yeah, Mrs. War. M Mrs. Flood takes over the TARDIS. Oh, my God, imagine that. But I feel like that would be too easy. Mrs. Flood is in Season 2. So, unless she's a recurring villain. And I think Russell did say we won't find out straight away who she is. So, I think we might just get another villain taking over the TARDIS. Hey, could it be the Daleks. Again, I I'm so fixated on the Daleks being in this episode. Or Flood's TARDIS or another TARDIS. Mm, very interesting. But Empire of Death. That really... Oh. Oh, ho, ho. But, yeah. You know what, though? I think the BBC know what they're doing with, uh, obviously, bringing back Moffat. Because they've even mentioned it in the press release that Stephen Moffat is coming back. You know, that's... Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, Moffat is, you know, a well-known, uh, well-established writer. So, blimey. Ah, the, 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 the Empire of Death. You've got me excited. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. Got me excited, for real. Empire of Death. Yeah. Or, a.k.a. Empire of Daleks. M Empire of Daleks, 100%. That is going to be what the what that means. It does sound very Dalek-y. But, hey, Empire of Daleks. You know what? They need to use that one, though. I'm going to write that as a tweet, actually. The Empire of Death sounds There we go. Tweet that out. Because you know what? I'm going to get my hopes up by saying that the Daleks are back, but I would love it to be the case. But you know what? We've got some very unusual titles uh, for this season, but you know what? I'm here for it. The titles aren't the main thing anyway. It's about actually what's in these episodes. But bloody hell, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, bloody hell, I'm excited. Consider me intrigued.
Oh, honestly, just oh. So trailer uh, is going to be released at six p.m. So in eighteen minutes time, we are going to be seeing the new trailer. Which oh, I am going to be hyped. Uh, you are going to get a raw reaction from your boy Nerd Dan. Literally eighteen minutes to go. We're here for it. We're here for it. Oh, right. Yeah, so it'll be on the social media channel. So I've got Twitter open anyway, just because I'll get notifications from the page. Do, 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 do. Huh, interesting. Oh, wait. Okay, never mind. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, my Instagram just crashed on my phone. That's 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 lovely. Yeah, it seems... The series seems a lot more scary, which is a great thing. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it It's trying a new thing, which is good. Which is good. What are the odds that Tennant has a cameo in the season one finale? You know what? At this point, I wouldn't be surprised. Russell has said that... Well, that Russell and David have said that's it for the 14th Doctor. I do think he, he will definitely show up again. You know, the door has definitely been left open for 14 to return. But I don't think and I hope that it's not in this season. Because blimey... Ah, I mean, we, we might get an update um, from... Um, because we know that Yasmin Finney's character, Rose Rose Noble, will be uh, in uh, the finale as well. So w she might mention that, you know, because Donna is probably now working for UNIT. I know she is definitely working for UNIT. So she might say, oh yeah, Donna's off with the 14th Doctor on a mission in Peru or something like that. So, uh, yeah... I think that would be a uh, interesting, um, yeah, yeah, it would be an interesting uh, turn of events, for sure. You know, getting um, updates on uh, where the characters are. Like, for example, with the Brigadier and stuff. You know, we didn't see the Brigadier in New Who, but we got information during the Sontar and two-parter and series four that he was off on a mission in Peru. So it, it could be something like that. Maybe they could actually use Peru as an example to obviously pay. Uh, respects to um, the Brigadier as well and, um, you know, kind of have a cheeky little reference. I couldn't imagine Russell doing that. Uh, doo -doo -doo. BBC YouTube channel has a short of episode titles and what looks like new title colours. Okay, interesting. I'll have to check that out in a second. Uh, do you think we will get a new title sequence? No, I, no, no, no. I don't think we're going to get a new title sequence. It might be slightly different compared to what we've had before. Um, with uh, the 60th specials and the church on Ruby Road, but it's not going to be any different. We might get you know more sparks or something in the vortex, but I don't think it's going to be any different. Uh, my hopes for series one, I just want it to be good. I just want it to be good. I want to see uh, different genres being tackled in you know each episode, and yeah, I just want to have a good time watching Doctor Who, and I want it to you know feel like a soft launch because that's that's what they're promising us. So I want I want it to be like that. I want it to be a bloody good Doctor Who series, you know. Ah, oh, I'm so excited. Right, okay. Let's have a look at this short whilst I'm here. So, BBC Studios, uh, BBC Doctor Who. That might, hopefully, give me something. Um, okay. On the BBC channel, let me find it. Where is it? Where is it? Eight, eight Adventures. Oh, yeah. That's the uh, short of all the things that we've seen so far. All of all the graphics and stuff. Oh, fair play to them. Dot and Bubble. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's basically what we've seen so far, but we're getting another trailer after. Uh... 
very exciting though, isn't it? Very exciting. Uh, do you think the series will be dark? Yes. I mean, there will be light-hearted moments and stuff like that, but I think the overall plot, yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit darker, but... Hey, I'm I'm here for it, but I also think it is going to be very joyful as well. I don't I don't think we're going to get another series eight where it's like a lot darker. Um, the trailer will be dropping in uh, thirteen minutes, so yeah, uh, yeah, you're in Eastern time. Yeah, so it'll be thirteen minutes, and then yeah, we are getting brand new Doctor Who. Yeah, ah, it's gonna be exciting. But honestly, yeah, 73 yards also does get me very excited because Russell has said that, um, you know, we are going to be uh, seeing the best work that he's done so far or something like that. Like he said, he's really proud of it. And apparently Shooty's performance in episode four is phenomenal. So, whoo, it gets me excited. It really does. It's getting me pumped. But obviously, I don't want to get too overhyped because, you know, it could end up being crap. But, you know. I don't, I don't think it will, you know, but that's just me being, you know, managing my expectations. But yeah, 12 minutes to go. Oh my God, it feels like it's dragging on forever. But how long will we be streaming for now? I actually do not know. Um, it'll say here, wouldn't it? Blimey, over two hours. Okay, <laughs> over two hours. Is that on my computer? Um, which is a vibe. Uh, da -da. I'm very excited for episodes three and four. Oh, nice one. Micron, nice, or Micron. Oh, very, very excited. Uh, protest for 7pm premiere time. I mean, that will be for the episodes. They will be on BBC One, but they will be available at midnight as well on iPlayer beforehand. So, if you're busy during the day or whatever or can't watch it at midnight, I suggest if you can, because I know there's jobs and that out there now where you've obviously got to be on social media, try muting hashtags, stuff like that, or whatever, but yeah, it, it it's that that's why it's a... Uh, controversial thing for it to be at midnight because Doctor Who's never done that before uh, da -da, da -da -da. imagine if we saw Martha in the trailer you know what I would scream with excitement I'd scream with excitement because I bloody love Martha Freema Adjaman is a wonderful woman anyway but um, also one of my uh, childhood crushes but uh, <laughs> no she's um, you know a, a, an incredible actress as well and I love seeing Martha you know it, yeah yeah Marvel does deserve better, yes, 100%. Uh, but honestly, such, such an amazing character, and I just want to see more of her. Loved the big finish stuff Freema's done. Uh, loved, yeah, a lot of stuff she's done outside Doctor Who. She was in Torchwood as well. She's meant to do be do more of Torchwood, but unfortunately, due to her doing Law and Order, she wasn't able to be a part of Children of Earth. But, oh, just mm, gets me excited. Yes. Ah, I'm just getting hyped. Ten minutes to go till the trailer. Aloha. Gets me excited. It really does get me excited. Oh my god, I can't stop saying that. I really can't stop saying that. What episode do you think will be the best? Now, that's like... You know, yeah. I, I mean, I can't really say. Well, you know, I hope I hope they're all good. But the Devil's Court is one that really excites me because the way they're hyping up Jinx Monsoon's character, um, and I hope that Jinx Monsoon's character lives up to the hype. You know, they're saying that Jinx is playing one of the most powerful villains that the Doctor's ever faced. So it'll be interesting to see it. You know that, but also the historical context. You know, the Beatles are going to be a part of it as well. And that excites me. It really does. Uh, true though, even if she does come back, I hope they don't spoil it in a trailer. Yeah, that does make sense. The only way I'd see them included in her in a trailer is obviously to just drum up excitement for the new series because obviously Martha is from an era of Doctor Who, which you know when Doctor Who was mainstream, and Freema Adjaman is you know a well-known actress as well. So having her back, it would certainly drum up interest. So I could imagine them doing that. Uh, because you'd get the hashtags, you'd, you'd, you'd see free management trending on Twitter as well, and it'd just be, ah, oh, it'd be so lovely. It uh, feels like it might be a Mandalorian type of vibe to where the first six episodes are kind of, like, iffy, hit or miss. The last two just blow us away. 
also did they say the finale is just episode eight so there's okay there's two part finale and yeah i kind of i can see where you're on about the mandalorian style thing but to be honest that's been modern who to be honest hit or miss that's kind of the episodes to be honest um even though i'd say series one and series four were perfect oh and series five as well But, um, oh yeah, the, the Empire of Death. Empire of Death is, uh, is, is a vibe. It is, it is a vibe. That, that, that's another title. Literally, the last two titles have stuck with me. They've stuck with me good. Oh, God. We're so bloody close now. Ugh. Literally, I'm just constantly checking Twitter to see if it's dropping early. I'm here for, here for it. Yeah, that's why I've been, been, been a bit quiet because I'm like, ooh, a bit tired. But I'm doing this stream anyway because I'm happy. I am happy. I really am. Happy to go and rock and roll for new Doctor Who. And yeah, shout out to the car outside. As much as I want to see Martha or a previous character, it just needs to be written well either way. Not like uh, Jack's second Jodie appearance in the Dalek episode. It needs to be um, like the future one. Yes. Yeah, I think yeah the, the characters when they return, if they return, they need to be written well. Um, but so far with Mel coming back, I know she didn't have a big role in the guild, but I, I did like the the part that she had, and see more, seeing more of her would certainly be a treat. So um, I know, yeah, there's that whole thing. Yeah, we got Joe Grant, and we we got Ian Chesterton as well, uh, briefly like five episodes ago. But I think showing that, I think as well, bringing back older companions, especially with whatever happens to Ruby, just. Hopefully she knows that there's a life outside of being with the Doctor and perhaps, you know, she goes on to work for Unit or something like that. Because uh, they did allude to that with Yaz, but then we never got an update on Yaz. So, I don't know. It it would be interesting if maybe in the finale when the Doctor lands at Unit, or Crash lands at Unit, uh, that there's like a like a checklist of like, oh, this is what um, so-and-so is doing. Like, oh yeah, Yaz is on a mission in Germany or something like that. Or in France, you know. Um, you know, I, I think that would be really cool. But if we are going to see a character return, oh man, I, I just love it to be Martha. I really would. Um, it would be amazing to see Joe Grant return. Yeah, it, it would be. Yeah. It would be. I'd love to see Joe Grant return in full capacity. Uh, you know, well, I say full capacity, like for an episode or two. Like, oh, Kate, Kate Manning's lovely anyway. You know, I've, I have the chance to obviously interview her on the podcast um, and obviously speak to her a lot in conventions, but she is such a lovely woman. Honestly, ah, oh, she really is incredible. Whew. Maybe in a future unit spin off. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of rumours that there was going to be a unit spin off, but Russell T. Davis shut them down. But then again, would he? just admit to a spin-off when he's not ready to announce it. There is that. Uh, Luke Smith uh, appearance would go hard. Yes, Tommy Knight returning to the world of Doctor Who would be incredible. But yeah, bring back Luke, Rani, Clyde. Uh, that, that would be phenomenal. Bring, bring back the Bannerman Road Gang, honestly. You know, to honour Sarah Jane, because they have now canon canonised, um, you know, Sarah Jane's passing now uh, in the Doctor Who universe. So I guess, you know, alongside T Tales of the TARDIS, obviously bringing back Clyde and hinting that you're going to get with Rani, just to bring her back to the main show. Hey, get them involved with Unit, you know? That would be really cool. Oh my God, it'd be nice to see, um, you know, classic, you know, well, not, well, I don't know, I know the cl classic companions, but, you know, classic characters that, you know, feel classic because they were so well written and there's some from so long ago we haven't seen them on the main show since well no in a televised appearance since 2011 obviously Clyde getting a reappearance last year was a bloody wonderful treat 
So hopefully he gets to uh, return in the new era. I would love that. I really would. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did shut down Mo uh, rumors of Moffat returning. So yeah, let's. They yeah, still hope for a unit spin-off, and I feel like unit that they're, they're um, in such a big capacity now. Um, you know, they've got an Avengers style tower and stuff like that. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel like unit unit are gonna get a spin-off, whether it be you know like three episodes or like you know whether it's like a limited spin-off where it's just three episodes, three hour and a half episodes or whatever, or it's gonna go for multiple seasons like Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures. Who knows, but there are tales to tell with Unit. Uh, we saw Clyde. Uh, yeah, we did see Clyde with Joe recently. So anything's possible. Feels like the best way to bring back a companion. Unit spin-off recruited by Kate. Yes, yes, and yes. I think that would be incredible. All right, we are literally, we are literally, um, yeah, we are literally like two minutes away. Two minutes. Oh, two minutes, two minutes. One minute, one minute, one minute. Ah, final prediction for the trailer, anyone? Does anyone have any final uh, predictions? Because, uh, okay, here we go, let's, um, I'm gonna, hang on, let me do this, boom, okay, so, I'll have the trailer up there, Ooh, excitement levels, ah, can't wait, can't believe, wait, here we go, Eek. hello, nerd, Jack of Den, hello, my friend, I hope you're doing well, oh, so happy to have you here. That's a play on the name. You know what? Channel rebrand confirmed. Let's go. Alan Z. Yes, we are close. We are close. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Do, 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 do. Okay, 6 p.m. Um, there's nothing. I've got nothing left. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, I mean, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay, here we go, here we go. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Boom. You ready for this? I am ready. Epic. Oh, these shots are gorgeous. Oh, this is so Richardson. <laughs> you are wild, brave, and rude. No, you made it worse. Where shall we go? Oi! It's you. Spurs, baby. Oh, is it the end of a land? That's not a random landing. Is it safe? That slug at all, the boogie man. Okay, that's a tease and a half. Oh, there's Jinx's character. Oh! Shooty's performance is... This is getting me hopes. That's a shot from the 60 trailer. Oh, she's gonna have another sing song. Nice. And that's just the beginning. 
Oh, okay. Right. Let's get your reactions. Okay, what's everyone saying? What's everyone saying? Oh my god, they're actual space babies. Oh, another tear after the promise. That's so ominous. Yes. Oh boy. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, right. Let's have the breakdown now. Not the breakdown of me. Um, <laughs> even though, yeah. Right, let's switch over. Let's switch over. Um, let's switch over to here. Right, okay, let's go to YouTube. YouTube, Doctus, yeah. Okay, here we go. So, let's flick through this trailer. So, playback speed. Let's slow it down. So, we've got uh, Shooty breaking the fourth wall. Again, this could be just part of the promotional material. TARDIS flying towards um, Unit Tower. Shot there from the Devil's Cord. The TARDIS landing in Ruby's mom's flat. So Carla's flat, which she shares with uh, Cherry Sunday. Uh, give me the love and I kind of love that phrase now. And then, obviously, that's where he runs up to uh, Yasmin Finney's character, Rose Noble. Uh, I, can't, I can't wait to see see that reunion. Um, oh, Interesting, though, that Carla is at unit as well. So whatever's gone on, um, maybe, you know, Carla and hopefully Jerry as well have had to be evacuated from um, their home, I'm guessing. Uh, Dalek invasion? <laughs> I've, been, I've been saying that all stream, but perhaps it is. But, ooh, crazy TARDIS uh, takeoff sequence. The visuals look incredible. But this... Um, hang on, let, let's go back. So we've got... Um, that's seen there in the booth. Um, we've got a dome city there, which I'm guessing might be from episode five. But we, we just got a glimpse there of the doctor with a red beanie and a yellow coat. Another costume variation. Blimey, it's a full blown trailer as well. Wow. And I'm guessing this is from the Space Babies episode. Uh, I'm guessing this is Ruby seeing space for the first time. The Regency era episode. Jonathan Groff's character. There seems to be a little bit of... Uh, is it romantic tension? Or some tension between uh, the Doctor and uh, Jonathan Groff's character. Who we still don't know who this is. Yes, this is so Bridgerton. Uh, wonderful outfit there as well. And then this is again from episode 1. Uh, I'm guessing this is the first place that they land on after the ending of Church on Ruby Road. And Ruby being described uh, by a character there from episode 6. A lot of shots from episode 1, which is very exciting. And then, again, I'm guessing this is from the opening of episode 2. And, oh, I love this shot. They're recreating the iconic Beatles shot. Lovely. Hopefully they get to do it at the end of the episode with the Beatles. I feel like that would be really cool. Um, I'm guessing that spaceship is from episode 1. Um, and then, again, another shot from episode 1. Uh, with actual space babies. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff from episode 1 in this trailer. Which is incredible. Uh, we've also got as well... Um, I think this is from... Slug episode, I think, is from episode 5 to do with tech. And I'm guessing it's my mind control. And there's the Boogeyman monster from episode 1. Epic stuff. And this one is from Boom, Stephen Moffat's episode. Which I feel like, yeah, there is going to be a scene where the Doctor's going to get a big grand speech. And, ah, it just really gets me hyped. And then, I'm guessing this scene with Carla could actually be from the finale. Because maybe the Doctor is the reason why she's at unit. Or perhaps midway uh, for the series, I don't know. But, ah, uh, the tear scene. Uh, seeing Shooter getting emotional is something. Oh my god. And then obviously this is from the finale. We've got uh, the Doctor on the back of Mel's moped. Obviously Mel's driving the moped uh, away from this empire of death. Then Jinx Monsoon's character. What's going on here? But uh, I don't know what Jinx is holding on to there. Is it? I think, yeah, Jinx is on the roof there. But there's some very interesting teasers going on here. 
But honestly, the Doctor's speech here is so empowering. I'm guessing this is from the uh, Moffat era episode. But look, yo, this is an album cover and a half. What? Incredible. Incredible. Again, just look at... Ah. Like, this scene looks well acted and very emotionally driven. Uh, some filler shots there from the Time Vortex. Uh, the Doctor... From, well, well, yeah, episode 2 and then episode 6. And this is some stuff from Church on Ruby Road, I think. So yeah, some of these shots we have defo seen before from other trailers and stuff like that. But, oh, getting the context and stuff is just, oh. It's powerful and, oh, just look at the CGI in that shot. Wow. There's so much going on. And again, yeah, this shot was used uh, in the 60th trailer. Don't know if it will be in any of the episodes, or again, if it's just a filler shot. Oh my god. The butterfly. Lovely. Lovely stuff. So, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. I hope that's actually in the episode, but I, I think this is just promotional stuff. The doctor talking to the camera. There we go. Wow, right, let's catch up with the chat because I've been rambling away for ages now. Oh, right, so... Yeah, Space Babies, lol. <laughs> the Albert, uh, the Abbey Road shot, classic. Slug episode is episode 5, not episode 6. Yeah, I think it is episode 5. Boom does look amazing, though. Holding onto a piano. Yes. Okay, that does make sense. The trailer was so naff. No, I thought it was really good. Yeah, it felt like in Jodie's era, we didn't really get to see it angry. Not saying we need, like, a Con Baker level of Strangle Your Companion, but want to see a scene like Eccleston versus Dalek type vibe. And also, just, a, like, more variety of uh, emotions as well. Like, Jodie, there's little hints of it, uh, especially in Series 12, but she never went all the way of just showing how she really felt. Uh, like her incarnation, I mean. Um, and it's just nice that Shooty's getting that. Oh my god, I'm so excited. But anyway, I am going to go now. Um, because I want to eat, so I'm hungry. Uh, but blimey, I'm so excited. Wow, let me know in the comment section down below. What do you think of this trailer? I am really excited. Oh, Series 1 hype. Boom. Or Season 1, should I say. But wow, thank you all for tuning in it's been a long stream but you know what i bloody loved it so yeah take care love you all and peace